Hey guys, this is Dr. Samir Islam. I want to thank you for joining me today. And today is the last set of lectures on celiac disease. And today I'm going to talk about a very confusing topic for a lot of people. And this is the difference between celiac and gluten sensitivity. And so a lot of people think that they may have celiac disease, but they actually are more sensitive to gluten, or they actually may be sensitive to gluten, but in actuality, they actually have celiac. There's a lot of confusion out there about exactly what, the, what is the difference between the two and what is one versus the other. And in today's lecture, I want to hopefully explain exactly what that is so that you can be... Oops. So that you can be... Sorry about that. Uh, how it happens when you're live. Sometimes things happen. But anyways... Um, I want to explain exactly the difference between the two so you can be informed for exactly what we can do. And so what celiac disease is, keep in mind it's an actual autoimmune reaction against gluten products. And so what this means is that whenever you eat gluten or ingest gluten, this causes damage to the small intestine that's actually there. And so you actually lose the villi of the small intestine. And because of that, you lose the ability to absorb, absorb food, vitamins, and nutrients. Some of the symptoms from celiac include things like diarrhea, constipation, bloating, nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain. And the way we diagnose celiac disease is that there's a couple things that we can do. Blood testing for celiac, including a blood tests like a TTG. We can do genetic testing for celiac disease as well. And then we can confirm that you have it with a biopsies of the small intestine because this will confirm the damage that's seen within the small intestine. This allows us to grade uh, the degree of your of small intestinal damage that's there. And the treatment for celiac disease obviously is to avoid gluten. Now this is very different from gluten intolerance and gluten sensitivity. And here's the main differences. Number one, when, when you have celiac, it's an actual autoimmune reaction against your gut, meaning you lose those villi. Whenever the gluten goes into the small intestine, you lose those villi that are there and they're gone. They're sheared off almost like blades of grass. When you have gluten sensitivity, it is not an autoimmune reaction, meaning you don't actually have damage in the small intestine. You don't have any problems with that. You don't have any damage that's there. And you don't have any problems with the villi that are there. They're still present in the small intestine. But you may have some of the symptoms uh, that are similar to celiac. And those symptoms include things like bloating, pain, brain fog, diarrhea, upset stomach, and arthritis as well. And these are also very similar for patients who have gluten sensitivity, they feel bloating, they feel pain, they have a brain fog and diarrhea and upset stomach, and even arthritis problems when they ingest gluten or they have wheat products. And this, can, this is what can make it very confusing between the two. However, there are certain symptoms that are consistent with celiac, and there are certain symptoms that are not consistent with celiac. And so if you have somebody who's anemic or has significant weight loss, this is always associated with celiac disease. This is not associated with gluten sensitivity. If you have gluten sensitivity, you should not be anemic. You should not have significant weight loss. If you have this, this may mean something else is going on within your GI tract that may need to be evaluated in the future. The diagnosis for celiac disease, like I mentioned before, is based on symptoms, labs, and then endoscopy. The, the, and with that, we can have a pretty good, idea, <coughs> pretty good idea if you have celiac disease or not. The diagnosis for gluten sensitivity is a little bit different. It's based on symptoms alone. There is no blood test that will let me know that you are sensitive to gluten. And what we typically do is we do what's called a gluten response in which we see how you feel with gluten. And then if you start to feel bad, we'll have you avoid gluten products or wheat products. And if you feel better and you don't have any of the blood work consistent with celiac, but most likely you have what's called that gluten sensitivity. That means that you may be sensitive to gluten products, but you don't actually have the autoimmune reaction that occurs with that. So we can actually diagnose somebody with celiac disease with simple blood tests and or, and or an upper endoscopy. It's hard to really diagnose somebody with gluten sensitivity without having them try gluten and then taking out and then seeing how they respond with respect to that. So the treatment for celiac disease, obviously you have to avoid gluten. But also with celiac, you have to avoid gluten, gluten contamination. So food that may be around gluten products, you have to avoid. And, and you also have to avoid gluten in non-foods as well. So things like lotion, makeup, things like that, that actually may have gluten in them, you have to avoid that. 
This is different from gluten sensitivity, in which all you have to do is avoid the food products that have gluten. That's it. You don't have to avoid the gluten contamination. You don't have to avoid the gluten in non-foods. And so when you have gluten sensitivity, you don't have to be as careful with some of the other things that can be contaminated with gluten. You don't have to be as strict with that. Now, the long-term problems with celiac disease include things like having anemia or low blood count. There's a risk of developing lymphoma in the small intestine and significant weight loss. The long-term problems with gluten sensitivity are basically none. There really all are no long-term problems with that, except for if you have symptoms like bloating and diarrhea, that can be very troublesome. But you typically will not get anemia, lymphoma, or weight loss from gluten sensitivity. And this is because, keep in mind, Gluten sensitivity is not an autoimmune reaction against your gut. So these are some of the differences between celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. Number one is that celiac disease is an autoimmune problem. You actually lose some of the small intestine. There are ways to diagnose celiac disease. And the treatment for that is to avoid gluten and gluten-containing products. This is different from gluten sensitivity in which there really is no good way to diagnose this except for you have to avoid gluten and see how you feel. The treatment for that is to obviously avoid gluten, but that's basically all you have to do. You don't have to worry about cross-contamination or other products that may have gluten. And there are no long-term consequences with being uh, having gluten sensitivity.